no, we're not in that position. Uh, do we have to fight to get back to where we were? Unequivocally. Our relationship with the U.S. has uh, arguably never been worse in some ways. We have a very fractious president at the moment. What should we do? Do what we're doing. We do what we're doing, and the, the, the alternative dispute settlement mechanism for the WTO uh, that Canada and Jim Carr are suggesting uh, to the Europeans, and which the Europeans, are, I believe, agree with, uh, is exactly what we should be doing. We've got to find alternatives to institutions that aren't working properly. When you were finance minister and prime minister, we were equally buffeted by the economic reality of America. We have, again, the debt ceiling problem rearing its head uh, just a couple months away. Is that economy our biggest risk? I think, I think it's the failure of that economy to understand the need to cooperate globally. Um, do the, I, there's no doubt the Americans are going to, the debt, they don't they'll have to deal with a debt ceiling. They have the capacity. They have the capacity to do what, they're, what they have to do. They just have got to take the right decisions. The problem now is that they're turning their backs on those decisions. And, that's, and, and you, you, if you turn your back on working with the rest of the world, then we're obviously not going to deal with globalization's issues. I don't believe that that's tenable in the long term. Tenable as in 2020 doesn't see a Trump re-election? 2020 that sooner or later uh, reality has to, has to uh, really make its, its strength felt. Given, you know, you mentioned some of the many players in the creation of the G20, in fighting the financial crisis, it was Treasury secretaries, finance ministers, and also world leaders. It's every level. Are those people still there? They seem very silent in this America. Yeah, oh, they are. Uh, no, there is a very, there is a very strong, the United States has a very strong capability and they have people who are certainly capable of understanding this. Um, it, it, those people did not disappear. Some of them are a lot older uh, than they were. But let's face it, it, the change began in 44 with the creation of the United Nations. We would not have succeeded at that if the Americans had not taken such a leadership position. Uh, and so that, you know, we're not asking the Americans to reinvent a wheel that somebody else created. We're asking them to simply participate in that which worked. And I believe that that voice will be heard in the United States. And if it is not? Well, then we're in trouble, but I don't believe, and that's the reason why I think it's going to be heard. There is a kind of a, a feeling that things are actually pretty good in Canada and in the U.S. There's a, a, there are some parts that feel gloomy and worrisome, but that things are generally good. Do you subscribe to that view? In terms of the feeling between the two countries, yes, I, no, there's no, sh no, no doubt about that at all. When you go down, when you talk to state governments, when you talk to municipal governments, when you talk to um, a, a great deal of people in both parties, um, I think that the will is there. Uh, and I think that the understanding is there. Um, but I don't think we should just rely on it. As a country, we've got to do what we are doing, and that is working with alternatives. We're working with the Europeans right now. We've got to work with them. We've got to essentially, there, a lot of work is going to have to take place, take place in, in Africa. Because while if we forget that Africa is going to be 25% of the world's population mm -hmm. in about 30 years, then we're going to be duck discussing a very different set, set of issues. So I just think we've got to work on every frontier uh, that we can.